With Task Force Vulture recently fighting a gruelling night battle, the Japanese are now put in a very precarious position. With the loss of two destroyers and being unable to sink any American ships, Task Force Vulture was sent back to Rabul to repair, dispirited. Hopefully, with the emergence of the mighty Yamato now taking the repairing Nagato's place in the Task Force, the IGM might be able to score some hits on the American Navy, which seems to grow even more day after day. Hello, hello, and welcome back to War on the Sea as the Imperial Japanese Navy, of course, where we are carrying on from trying to reinforce our invasion on Milne Bay once again. Um, the balance of power is very, very minorly in our favour there, um, but I think it's going to decrease rather than increase uh, as the day goes on. Uh, so we're going to try and get a lot more troops and supplies on there to take that. And that's going to be quite, uh, I think, the sign of what's to come, really, with this campaign. Um, as we're going to try and move straight onto Port Moresby afterwards. And that's even more heavily defended with the greater level of port and airfield there. You can imagine that the uh, Allies also have a greater number of troops defending there as well. We have also sighted a enemy task force headed by a Montana in this area over here. We did manage to sink um, a heavy cruiser out of that and cripple a Cleveland with our submarine over here. Uh, we're going to try and hunt that down once again with our submarine, try and keep getting some uh, damaging shots towards that uh, so that we can move in with our Yamato group, uh, which has newly been uh, refreshed there to replace the uh, Nagato. We do have a couple empty slots there. I'd like perhaps a heavy cruiser or even a second battleship there, ideally, uh, if we're going to be pushing surface engagements. So we still can't be forcing every surface engagement that comes our way. We do still have to walk somewhat tenderly and uh, really be very careful uh, when considering what fights we take. So again, that's really the uh, agenda for today. Uh, let's get on and see what we can do. And as an update, it's now 10 minutes past midday on the following day. It looks like we've spotted possibly that Montana group. We've not entered the tactical view to confirm that so that we can keep steady eyes on that on the strategic view. We're moving I-15 over. We do have a Jake to maintain contact with that. We are, let's see exactly how far away. 4.6 hours away from reinforcing Milne Bay, which is great stuff. Uh, we do have a good amount of planes over our supply group to double check that. And it looks like actually uh, we've maintained our lead on the enemy there with our invasion. So our supplies here really will be certainly decisive, won't they? So that'd be absolutely brilliant news. Uh, so, fingers crossed, we can actually catch this Montana before it catches our supply group once again. And we have, in fact, sighted that Montana battle group. So we need to des decide exactly uh, what we want to hit here. And of course, Montana is going to be the juiciest of targets and most tempting. And realistically, that might have to be it, to be honest, so that we can cripple that ready for our Yamato group to come in. While Yamato could probably handle a Montana, the trade will not be in our favour completely, will it? We don't want to be taking too many hits onto our Yamato at this stage of the game, do we? So I think we will go for that uh, ship there. Let's actually halt and stop moving so that we don't overshoot our turn and get too close to the enemy. And of course identify that Montana to uh, be sent to the bottom. So we do see enemy scouts in the area. It doesn't look like the enemy is going to react to us though because the sea state is high enough to uh, cause the uh, surface of the water to roil over us with these waves. It's not easy to spot from above the surface, is it? So, uh, we do see more aircraft. Why is that? Mm, not entirely sure there. Must have been enemy fighters and such moving about. We do have a very good lead onto this Montana. We're going to fire out all six of our possible torpedoes. It's a one degree spread. Uh, our lead is currently 25 degrees and declining. We want to narrow that down to, I think, 15 degrees. Uh, so we'll wait for that and send out some fish to find that very juicy target indeed.
well. You can see half of our torpedoes did hit the intended target and cause, it looks like there's a fair list to the Montana there. Actually, it's not a Montana, it's a new battle group. Oh, dearie dear, that is in fact an Illinois. That's not good at all. I don't know why I didn't recognize that sooner. Uh, that's very bad news indeed. <laughs> Well, either way, that's hit, and we did sink a Cleveland successfully. So, ideally, uh, for our intended plan there, we should have uh, increased our lead to actually stay with that perhaps 25 degree lead, but we can't complain, can we, for hitting two birds with one stone, can we? It's highly doubt that that Illinois will go down. Uh, I'm surprised, actually, we did get quite high solution uh, because we misidentified that as a Montana. Uh, the solution did go up to 90, which is actually extremely good for a misidentification there. But you can see the list on that, uh, Illinois, is very, very good indeed. Shall we take an action report, perhaps? Uh, let's find that out to see exactly what we've done. Heavy to heavy, I think we'll let that, uh, let that mull over, see exactly what happens with that flooding. Uh, give it some time to work its way through the ship there. Well, as you can see, uh, unfortunately, the uh, US repair and damage control teams did get on top of that flooding as much as they could. Uh, the Illinois, of course, does uh, still maintain heavy damage across the board, apparently, but uh, the flooding has been reduced to a moderate uh, level, which they can maintain, unfortunately. But that is damage nonetheless. That might make them think twice about moving over to uh, Milan Bay over here, of course. We're going to carry on trying to intercept them further, uh, but I doubt that has really uh, you know, slowed them down, has it? So it looks like we did in fact lose our uh, Jake there. That's absolutely fine. We can launch one more from Yamato, I think will be the case. In fact, we'll launch as a Pete, because uh, you don't need the extended range there. Let's see if we can re-establish contact. Well, we've re-established contact after a few hours, more towards the evening now, when uh, we've got to be going back home to bed, is this enemy fleet, apparently. They've had enough of being out at sea for so long, and it seems to be rather dangerous for them. So uh, they are now quite the distance uh, southeast of Milne Bay, retreating home for sure. So that is as good a victory as any by my book. It does keep them away from what will soon be our own operational area. So we'll mark that one up and uh, tread carefully as we watch out for yet another, perhaps uh, the Montana fleet should still be about. However, we should now be ready to unload our cargo onto Milne Bay. So as a reminder, looking fairly okay, sustaining uh, some decent, uh, you know, balance of power there on the invading force, but let's see if we can turn the tide decisively now. Finally, let's have a look. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Do have a lot more troops with enough supplies there. Hopefully that doesn't get uh, put down too much there so we can come back with some engineering and fuel to actually start using some planes on that base. Maybe upgrade it to a level three airfield as well. It's a much needed resource in that area. Might even decide to upgrade the port to a level three port uh, so that we can you know, refuel and rearm our ships uh, out in the open waters. We would of course have that in Port Moresby, as long as we don't bombard that, but it's just a little too out of the way to stay in operational uh, range, isn't it? Uh, so that'd be very nice indeed. Let's bring back our supplies. They should be able to get back home under cover of night, but it looks like we've spotted perhaps some uh, enemy submarine patrols here, so we're going to have to be very careful of that. Try and be somewhat evasive, but of course it's going to be a lot of time before we get over there and they'll be able to change their position very freely, won't they? So we now have the message on day 16 that Milne Bay is now under our control. We do still have some stragglers of allied forces defending that area, but otherwise it is in fact ours. Unfortunately, we are in fact going to have to wait until day 21 before we get some command points coming in, uh, because then we will be able to finally field some oil tankers to actually bring some fuel over to Milne Bay and upgrade the airfield and actually make use of any uh, planes, I believe. Um, it's been quite a while since I played this. I believe we do in fact need the fuel and uh, engineering there to use the planes, although it hasn't been deteriorating as we've been restocking our planes on Rabool. So we'll see about that. 
Uh, so in the meantime, we're busying ourselves with the reconquest of the Shortland Islands. We're going to see if uh, we can use the last of our troops and supplies from Rabul before we get restocked again to try and take that over. Just a few, a few thousand troops and a few thousand supplies okay, again to uh, manage that. We're going to push in Vulture a little closer over here and we have got 30 troops to try and take the Russell Islands over here just for that minor amount of radar we might get off of there and also some more command points at the turn of the next week. We're not hoping to uh, maintain that in the long term at the moment it's just for the extra little bit of command points at the end of the week because that's where our main amount is coming from at the moment. And while we're away looking at the Shortland Islands, we're still being bothered by enemy task forces around Milne Bay. So we've sent out some Emilys and some Bettys armed with uh, some large payload bombs, and we do see yet another battleship task force, uh, this time headed by South Dakota once again, so something a little more manageable for us, uh, with of course a uh, Crown Colony, uh, you know, light cruiser, we see also a Cleveland, uh, yeah, okay, County Heavy Cruiser is always fun to see, New Orleans, and in Atlanta. So approaching from the skies is going to be difficult while that's it bounces about. Um, but we might have to try and hit that at least with our Emilys because they're very slow and easy targets. We're going to try and approach from the rear anyway. Um, it's not being very nice towards our nav points there. Uh, tell you what, we'll just tell them to go straight towards that and attack them. Uh, well, let's do that straight away. Let's break and attack. Why not? Uh, the Bessies can, I think, raise their altitudes quite a bit to try and avoid some of that flat fire. Uh, like so. And they can come around to perhaps get a second run onto that Atlanta and certainly look towards that starter Cosa. Let's move those over once again. Hopefully, we can get some decent hits onto this, even just to cripple this uh, targeted ship here. Get some of those guns offline. Slow down the task force. I wouldn't rush to hit this with our Yamato task force just yet without softening it up beforehand, of course. And that's not going to be too bad. Spread might be a bit wide for such a thin ship as the Atlanta. Fingers crossed we get at least a couple hits. Let's have a look. We do get one hit onto the bow, don't we? So that's absolutely brilliant. Uh, hopefully that does work. Certainly should penetrate straight through. It's an 800 kilogram armor piercing bomb. Uh, so if anything, it's over penetrated in Atlanta. But with any luck, that goes all the way through to the magazine. Let's try and hit us again with some Bessies. They can increase their speed, and they can be told to attack now, actually, before they waste any more time. Otherwise, everyone else can identify the South Dakota, uh, which is number two. That's great stuff. We'll work our way towards there. We have increased their altitude quite the damn bit there. So we're very happy. To see any bombs get dropped from here, of course, make no waste of the target. I think we tell this group now to move away if possible. Try and get out of, uh, out of dodge there. Once again, let's see if we get any more hits. You can only hope. Uh, it's not looking like it. That is a shame. We only saw two splashes there. It's rather interesting, but not too much of a bother. Let's actually take a damage report then against that. Moderates, moderates. Well, it's up to how well the fires do now, isn't it? Well, due to a massive oversight <laughs> on our micro. Um, actually, do we still have a bomb in this best? No, we don't. Let's tell that to actually pull away properly then. Uh, yeah, we did not tell this group to attack, which is absolutely bloody stupid. But we will do so now. I managed to increase our altitude even further and managed to get away without any losses, but that does of course mean at least one of our Bessies is going to move in smoking and we're ready to take even more hits, of course, the massive flying cigars that the Bessies are.
Well, the South Dakota did actually get hit by four bombs, but two of which were duds. <laughs> so that's rather unlucky there. That will only take very minimal damage as we retreat out now. Perhaps we'll try and hit that again in the following day if we manage to keep sight on that. Whereas that, yeah, very minor damage indeed there. And the Atlanta got on top of its fires as well. It's sad to say. So that was spotted here which is absolutely fine. We do also see a, perhaps a, uh, another cruiser group about, but otherwise it's return to base. We did lose all of those Emilys, unfortunately. It's very sad indeed. But still damage over there. As an update for the invasion of the Shortland Islands, we unfortunately don't seem to have enough troops on the ground there. We're gonna try and reinforce in very quickly with what we can with some detached destroyers from Task Force Vulture all loaded up with some troops but it's certainly not going to be enough to turn the tide there. We have noticed that we do have 4,000 troops on Buna, so we're going to try and pick up some troops and supplies from there with our major supplies, but it's going to be a massive round trip to sort that out. So the situation in Rabaul is we have only 200 troops there for the time being, and the rest of our bases are very, very bare bones indeed. Uh, so this is not entirely guaranteed that we're going to be able to recapture this, unfortunately. And one of our scouting jakes has spotted just south of Wardle Canal quite a large enemy cruiser group. Perhaps we can try and get some sort of engagement there. A little skirmish against this group would be very nice indeed. We are moving Task Force Vulture over to have a look at that and have some words with them. Uh, I do like our chances of perhaps picking up one cruiser before I retreat from that battle would be the, the initial plan there and get that in backwards and forwards, lightning strikes of course. Well, it's now the turn of the next day, and you can see that Task Force Vulture did attempt to go to the marked location, but we did see that enemy cruiser group. Unfortunately, because we did approach that largely overnight, we didn't manage to spot that. But we'll stay in that area and start moving towards uh, Milne Bay, where the enemy does still try to maintain a presence. And I'm going to put this down to, of course, bad weather and the distance from our good, solid radar, radar coverage. But the enemy seems to be moving a carrier over. I don't think that's correct. Uh, I think that's still going to be a battleship task force that we have previously sighted. Either way, I-15 is rearmed and is going to be trying to find any cruiser group that does decide to move over to Milne Bay. Uh, the previous battleship group did move right on top of Milne Bay, but did nothing, which is interesting to say the least. I was fearful that they might actually bombard it, uh, but to be very thankful of that they did not and we can see that without uh, fuel and engineering we can replen our aircraft here so we're going to wait uh, I think another day should be fine to fully restock there seeing as though we're level two and that should be brilliant for us uh, so we can actually start defending that a little more solidly there. Well our suspicions were indeed correct. What has been uh, designated on the strategic map as a carrier group, uh, I-15 has in fact engaged that and confirmed it is the South Dakota group we previously struck with bombs. So that uh, does tr appear to be attempting to uh, bear down on Task Force Vulture having scouted that out. So we do need to get rid of the battleship in this Task Force I think. Uh, that is of course the main prize. We're going to downscope. Uh, we do see an enemy scout, uh, and actually the sea state is five with 53% visibility. We can see actually we have probably damaged the uh, engine on this uh, South Dakota because it's falling behind. The spacing's not exactly right in this group. So that's brilliant. Uh, let's identify that so we can quickly build a solution. And uh, we'll uh, identify that correctly this time. <laughs> and we will fire out uh, Five successful hits will certainly do the job. We've already got a great solution at 80 and rising. Uh, that We can see that really is not doing very well speed-wise. It's down to 17 knots. Okay, what's our lead? Mm, could be better. Uh, what we want to do is probably get the tiniest bit closer and turn in a bit there to get a more perpendicular angle. And what we can do is actually let the outer, outlying uh, destroyer over here overshoot South Dakota. So the bomb hit previously did do some very good work if we can make sure we hit this target. Uh, reducing that down to 17 knots is absolutely amazing. Uh, the South Dakota, if we look at that properly, uh, does have a max speed of 27 and a half knots. 
so that's a massive massive reduction to its speed we can stop turning now I think that's absolutely fine let's have a look at our lead yeah that's not bad at all so we're going to wait for this uh, outer line destroyer uh, to pass over that uh, Saltico so it should be fine at the moment but I want to double check that so that we don't get any extra damage although having said that the torpedoes should go deep enough to actually miss that destroyer but do we want to take any chances? Not really. Well, four successful torpedo hits on so that all of our torpedoes did in fact hit, but one was in fact a dud, which is a shame. You can see a lot of damage is from bows and midships, so pretty much zero damage on the rear of the ship. Uh, but hopefully that is enough to cause a sinkage there. You can see it is overwhelming fire on the bows there, which should penetrate through to something very, very nice indeed. Well, there we go, one big beefy battleship sent to the bottom, which uh, means that particular task force is left with nine total ships. So still a bit of an uphill battle in terms of numbers if Task Force Vulture does decide to engage this, but it's also very nice, handy five command points for us, which will be sent straight to the bank. So that leaves us actually with, mm, it's gonna be tough, Simply because of the overwhelming firepower in this group, uh, we can't discount the counties in New Orleans firepower, and of course the Atlanta and Cleveland still there. Massive amounts of very high rate of fire guns to target our destroyers, and just because of the sheer volume of firepower can actually get through our heavy cruisers as well. So it's going to be tough. We're going to try and have to use our range with the Amazons who fight this. I think if we do, in fact, force an engagement. However, we're not currently in a position to fight a surface battle with Tarsos Vulture. It, not necessarily anyway, uh, because we've split off some destroyers to try and deal with a lone supply ship found in this area. We didn't manage to catch that, unfortunately. The distance was just too great. Uh, so we're going to have to recall everything there to try and get to Task Force Vulture, which is going to try and retreat there. Uh, but we'll see what happens don't really want to push an engagement just yet without our destroyers which will be used for excellent uh, smoke cover and torpedo power. So we carry on with I-15 to try and hit what seems to be another enemy battleship task force down here which has previously been identified as a cruiser group. Enemy is trying to scout out our supply group though so that suggests that the uh, group over here is either going for Vulture or the major suppliers. From their current course they're heading towards Vulture. But, unfortunately, that is all we have time for today, ladies and gentlemen. I think uh, we're going to try and force that engagement uh, with Task Force Vulture in the next video, if possible. And, well, we'll see what we can do about the Shortland Islands. We did manage to get some minor reinforcements there, which has shored up the balance of power a little bit. But if that changes too much before our major suppliers can get there, we might uh, be looking at taking that later on. So where does that leave us in terms of our own losses? We've lost a Shiratsu, a Kagura, and a second Shiratsu, um, well, in the space of a couple of days really, between the 16th and 17th of August. But enemy losses stand as a much juicier Crown Colony, Brooklyn, Pensacola, New Orleans, Northampton, Cleveland, and South Dakota battleship for a total of seven enemy ships sunk already. So that is absolutely brilliant. Barely a dent in <laughs> the total number of ships they have. Um, but that's part of the fun of this expanded arsenal mod because you can very easily wipe out the enemy um, very early on otherwise. But thank you very much for watching. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. It's always very useful and enjoyable to read those. In the meantime, may all of your nights and days be auspicious. Goodbye.